Okay, uh, it would be useful to speak about uh, transition functions uh, as working on strings instead of working on uh, single letters. So, so the formal definition is that you give me a, a you know a DFA defined formally, and delta QA is you know the state that uh, we end up if we start at state Q under the input A. And we would like to now define it for string. So delta star Q W, the star is for, for designating the fact that this works on strings, not on a single character, is the state the DFA ends up in if you start in Q and it reads the string W. So it's defined uh, recursively or inductively. Um, the first uh, uh, line states that if uh, if the string is empty, then the state delta star of Q on the empty string is just Q itself. And uh, the second line is just a, a recursive definition, which it says um, if the string can be written as AX, right, first the letter A and then the string X, then what we do, first we compute the state that we would be, uh, we will arrive from Q to A under, and then we apply, uh, to this state, we apply the string X, recursively, right? Um, if you want, you can think about it also as, uh, you know, if W is uh, uh, C1, C2, to cm, right, it's a string with m character, then you can define qi to be as follows, is delta of qi minus one of ci, right? So q zero is of course just going to be the start state, or in our case, uh, since we are trying to compute, so we are trying to compute delta, delta star of qw, right? So this is going to be equal to um, Q, uh, the length of W, right, which in our case is QM, right, where Q0 is defined as Q, and uh, the, car, uh, the inductive definition is this. Right? And it's easy to prove by induction that this other definition I gave you is um, is equivalent, right? Um, the the reason to think about this uh, in this way as Q0, Q1, Q2, and so on, that it gives you a better uh, understanding of what's going on, right? It's uh, essentially applying uh, uh, a string to the transition is equivalent to having a sequence of states which the automata goes through. And of course, the result, right, delta star, of QW is, of course, the final state that we end up in. Okay, so now that we have a, a formal definition of what is a, a transition function for a string, then we can define the language of an automata, right? It's all the uh, strings such that the transition function from the start state on the string W end up in an accepting state. And that's the formal definition. And the reason why we want the formal definition is because, you know, it helps us in... Okay, so let's revisit an example we already seen, right? Again, why this is... Uh, key zero is green in this diagram is a mystery. Um, so, delta star of Q1 of epsilon, right? So. We are at Q1, and uh, we accept the empty string. So, of course, the empty transition is we stay where we are. So, this is Q1. Okay. Uh, next one, we are in Q0, and we accept 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right, so we end up at Q2. This is Q2. 
or if you want in the terms of this uh, st if you want to think about it as the string right we had from let me delete it so we can re see it right we started at q0 we went uh, to uh, q1 on the one then we went back to q0 this was on the one this was on the zero then we went back to uh, q1 on the letter one and then we went to to uh, hotel california when we got the one right okay next example um okay we're at q1 and we got the sequence of states here is going to be let's see q1 we get the zero we go back to q0 uh, from q0 we got a one we go back to q1 right and then we get a zero we go back to q0 right so um Okay, so this is uh, Q0. And uh, this is equal to Q0. Yeah, next one. And Q4 of 1, 0. Oh, there's no Q4. That's going to be a problem. So that's not well defined. I think let's do delta star of your Q3 of one zero right q3 of one zero is going to be uh one going here and you go going big so it's going to be q3 and you know we can continue with such examples and the next question of course is what this automata what is this language and we already discussed this that this is just one zero or zero one star right because a one zero zero one from the start date returned to a start state, and you can do it alternatively as long as you want and finish up in the end state, and that's the only way to to get there. And we will add, we will have another uh, definition of this by other means shortly. Okay, what happened if we change the start state to Q one? Um, so that's a good question. Um, so this is interesting, right? Because if we get one, we immediately go to the uh, to Hotel California and we stay there so we don't get anything. So it must not start with a zero. Uh, sorry. The string in the language must not start with a the one. They must start with a zero. Okay, zero by itself is accepted. Right, because from zero we travel to Q zero and Q zero once we are there, we are staying there. And the language of since Q zero is the only accept state, at this point we just uh, 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 can write down the language for Q zero. All the strings that uh, from Q zero arrive to an accepting state, which is this. Okay, so that was not too bad. Let's do the next one. Um, Q2, Q3, okay, so now that is curious, um, and of course I didn't think about it, um, okay, uh, so, Okay, so one thing is easy to see. So now it's, it's beginning to be guessing a bit, right? Um, and in fact, in this case, it's easier to describe what is not the language. Right? The lang to stay outside the language, all you can do is move between Q0 and Q1, right? Because all the other states are the same. So this is really uh, the language that excludes one zero. You know, one zero star is uh, well, one has to be a bit more careful than that. It's either one zero star or one zero star one, right? This is, our language is the complement of this. Okay, 
but we don't really allow complement for regular languages. So if we want to write it as regular languages, this is not quite the right thing, right? So, um, so it turns out that it becomes easier to recognize if we redraw it in the right way, uh, which is kind of strange, but you know, um, that's somehow how the brain works. So I just moved it so that we have three states where Q0 is in the origin and Q3 is to the left and Q1 is to the right, right? And now, if you think about it, what's really going on is that those two those states, we start in a state where we have equal number of zeros and one, empty string. Now, if we get a one, we move to the right. If we get a zero, we move to the left, right? Now, um, so, so when are we uh, accepting, right? Well, if um, in any point in time, right, we have, uh, so this is really about, we start here, we start reading, right? First, if we get to Hotel California, we are done, we are accepting, right? How do we get to Hotel California? Well, we start here at Q0, where the number of zeros and one is balanced, and then either we have two zeros or we have two ones, right? So if there is any prefix of the string where the number of zeros, um, uh, you know, the number of, if there is a prefix where the number of zeros and one is equal and then there is an extra uh, two zeros or extra two ones, then we are there, right? The, the, the machine accepts, right? Okay, so um, so essentially we are going, this language is the language that all strings such that there is a prefix where the, the number of ones or the number of zeros um, exceeds the number of the other character by at least two, right? So if there is such a prefix, then we are immediately ending up in in uh, Hotel California, right? So if the number of z so L of M is a string W in zero one star such that the number so this is a standard notation you can write number of zeros in W it means the number of the kinds of W so if there is a prefix so it's called S is a pre there exists a prefix prefix of W such that the number of zeros um, is louder than the number of ones in P. Let me try again. Number of zeros in P is louder than the number number of ones in P plus one, or vice versa, right? Uh, in fact, the right way to write it is to just write in absolute form, right? Number of zeros in W minus number of zeros uh, in P, of course. Number of zeros in P minus number of uh, ones in P. This diff If this is one, then we are accepting. Now, this is not the only uh, situation, right? The other situation is when we just end up in this state. Or, um, or what? Or the number of ones of W, right, uh, is equal to the number of zeros of W. Now we need to figure out whether it's plus one or minus one. Minus one. And that's it, right? So this is the language, right? So it's either, it's the language for binary string where either the number of zeros and number of ones in some prefix, the difference exceeds one, or alternatively, the number of zeros and one, uh, there is uh, one more zero than one in the final string. Okay, strange as it might be, of course. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Uh, no. Okay, now you might ask yourself, why are we doing all this formal uh, uh, nonsense? And the reason is because when you write a proof, you really need this, right? So you need to really formally write things, otherwise it's not clear how to write the proofs in a convincing way. So formal notation is kind of the crutch that we will use to, to write proofs. And also, you know, um, formal definition gives you defines exactly what you mean, right? It's, uh, at some point, you need exact definition, right? When you write a program, you need to really provide all the details, and formal definition is the same thing. Um, and as an example of an exercise that would use this kind of formal definition, try to prove that uh, the uh, transition function on a concatenated string formed by u and v is equal to First, computing the transition from Q to U, and from U, from this state, we apply the transition function to V, and the two are equal. And this would be an inductive proof on the level of the strings. Um, you know, I would leave it as an exercise for you.